Hello and welcome to Core Women. My name is Dr. Summer Watson and I'm the founder of Core Women and I'm also an empowerment strategist for women. So if you're listening to this podcast to delve more into empowerment strategies, well, you're here for the right reasons. However, Core Women was also developed because it's a special place that provides a unique idea of home for the hearts and souls of women. It's a place for us to share our strength, energy, wisdom, and authenticity. It's a place for women to find support and strategic empowerment ideas that will help support their lives. Today on the show, I'd like to welcome country music artist Jessie G, who hails from a small coastal town in Oregon. She comes from a hardworking fishing family. She has a bachelor's degree in political science and fine arts. Her latest single is Army Ranger, and she has been on tour with Gretchen Wilson this summer. Let's get right into talking about your journey, Jessie G, and welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Summer. Absolutely. So let's get right into this, and let's talk a little bit about, you know, where it all began, you know, what was your inspiration for becoming a a musician, and let's go from there. Awesome, yeah. Uh, so it all began when I was very little, at a very young age, still in diapers. Um, my family always encouraged me that I was great at singing, and they always made me feel, you know, that I was talented and deserved to be on stage. I would hold little talent shows in our living room and uh, invite my grandma and my aunts and uncles and all that to come over to uh, watch me perform. And I would just have them sit on the couches, and I would, you know, play a CD and sing, and, you know, they would all clap and cheer me on. And then that grew into something a little bit more where I was, um, you know, in middle school doing talent shows for the school, the country fair. Um, And then I started winning talent shows and um, the fair talent searches probably around age 12, I would get first place in, um, on, like, just different events, and I thought to myself around that age, wow, this is something that I'm really good at, and I'm winning things, and, you know, maybe this is more than just, you know, a hobby for me. So at a very young age, it became kind of a dream, I would say. That's when it started developing, and I was very competitive in high school, and I ended up getting a scholarship to go to college um, for music, which was Huge, huge step for me in taking it seriously as a possible career. So that's kind of where it started. Okay. So let's go from there. Since you mentioned college, so you went to college, you got your degree, and was your intention to do something different than singing potentially? Knowing that you always loved singing, however, but potentially going to do something, go a different path, so to speak. Yeah. You know, being motivated by making a great living was always something that we're all taught, you know, as uh, just our, in our culture. And and so I, I really just, I loved, I was very fascinated with law in the sense of the courtroom and litigation and all that kind of thing. So when I majored in political science, that was, you know, a dream of mine was to be, you know, a lawyer that got that, almost that theatrical experience of just being in the courtroom. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then I, yeah, but then, you know, I, I, music was always my first love. But it was really hard for me to wrap my brain around making a career out of that in in a great living. You know, I wanted to be kind of the breadwinner or just, you know, like so many other listeners and yourself. I just wanted to be a strong, independent woman that was able to support myself and a family, you know, just and obviously I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to get married and have kids and all that stuff. But I just wanted to depend on myself. Um, So the law was always one of those things that I loved, but music was always my first love, I just, it took a while for me to see a path where that would work as a career. So yes, I started pursuing law for a little while. I worked for a few lawyers um, as a paralegal and, and as just an assistant. And I learned so much. And I also learned there that litigation in the courtroom drama and all that stuff actually isn't very common anymore. So <laughs> um, I discovered that, you know, hey, like most of the lawyers I work for, I was so, so lucky because they were honest guys who loved my music and and they kind of pushed me in a way to be like hey well you need to do what you love because no matter what you do you got to start at the bottom you got to work your way up and it's going to be hard and you're going to put your heart and soul into it so you need to make sure what you decide to do as a career is what you love the most and I'm very fortunate that I worked underneath some lawyers that kind of pushed me toward music <laughs> fantastic and and you know yeah. let's, let's let's go back a little bit because i want to talk about you know 
your upbringing and, and where you came from and coming from a coastal town and how fishing has been a big part of your life. Why don't you tell um, the listeners a little bit about that as well? Yeah, fishing, we're four generations of commercial fishermen going all the way back to my great grandfather. Um, and, you know, they started fishing just here and there as seasonal. And then it got to the point where my grandpa was super involved in it and he decided to do it full time as a living, be a commercial fisherman. And then he passed that legacy on to my dad and my dad passed it on to my little brother. And I would always be heavily involved in the boat and also we had drawn, which I was a huge part in starting because I would take the seafood that my family would catch on the ocean and I would bring it to uh, local farmers markets up in the Portland, Oregon area when I was still in college and going to, um, after college, going to paralegal school. And I would just do that kind of as a side living on top of playing music on the weekends. Um, and then I would also, you know, take some time to go down and work on the boat, being mostly like the baiter and driving the boat. Okay. Uh, and, you know, I would make money during the summers to, to afford to go to, you know, have the side money to be in college. And, I mean, fishing has always been a huge part of my upbringing. I'm very passionate about it. I um, and Catalyst Seafood just as a little company taking fish to farmer's markets and to starting our own family restaurant, which is now on, uh, on the port of Brookings Harbor, Oregon, and it's just a beautiful restaurant. So it's, in many ways, it's been a huge part of my life. The hard work, sea for salmon lifestyle, like we talked about um, a little bit ago, is, is a, a good it's it's one of the biggest reasons that I'm able to, like, do this cutthroat music industry and be a great self-employed entrepreneur as a musician because you really do have to be on your game all the time, finding ways to make money and make it work. Um, there's no one path to do what I'm doing for music. Absolutely. So I'm absolutely. very thankful. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, and you're a hard worker. And, you know, I wanted to Thank take you, you back there because it really shows that, you know, you came from a place where you had to start working really hard. And, you know, um, fishing absolutely opened doors for you as well and being able to afford certain things in music, you know, according yeah. to what I've read, you know. And so let's go forward a little bit and talk about your introduction to Gretchen Wilson, Battle of the Bands, and how that all evolved. Yeah, so I, I uh, was still doing the paralegal thing, but – I also had a band that I'd been playing with some of the guys for like 10 years because my first rock band I started in high school at the age of like 13. So um, these guys would, most of them actually moved up to Portland to play with me, play music. And I'm, I've been very grateful to be surrounded by so many talented musicians that I love to play with. They're, my band's also my family. Um, and so we were doing, you know, gigs, four-hour gigs all on the weekends. And I uh, had just graduated college, so I was able to focus on doing the music scene in Portland, Oregon. And, you know, we were sell I was selling fish on the side of the farmer's market, too, for income. And this uh, Battle of the Bands competition came up, and it was hosted by the local radio station, uh, 98.7 The Bowl, which they're still great friends of mine, and they've actually been a huge part of my start. And uh, I asked. Uh, Danny and Vita that were working at the station at the time, hey, guys, like, I see that Gretchen Wilson's coming and the Battle of the Bands competition is to open up for her. I definitely want to enter in this, and she's been my idol. I've She's been somebody that has influenced my music heavily. I always sing, like, here for the party to open up my shows. Um, mm -hmm. So I uh, definitely, like, loved her music, and I loved what she was about, her image. She was that you know, independent, hardworking, right. just badass chick, you know. Yeah, so seriously. That was one of those things. Yeah, she, and she, she still is. She's awesome. <laughs> um, but it was, it was really cool because it was like, hey, I have this opportunity to open up for somebody that I've admired my whole life. And so, of course, like I pulled out all the stops to make sure I won that, that competition. And uh, Right. So we won it. And, uh, yeah, and one thing leads to another, and she comes – uh, you know, I open up for her. She comes to Oregon. And after the show, I just had a little bit of liquid courage. <laughs> I went back and I was like, 
Hey, Gretchen. Um, you know, I just opened up for you. My name's Jessie. Can my family and I come and hang out with you? And and she was so cool. Like she was just like, yeah, come on back. And so we that sat at awesome. the kitchen table. Uh, yeah, it's almost like one of those <laughs> movie scenes that you don't like see very often that you see in like um, almost famous or you know. Movies. Right. Um, yes. Uh, but but she. That's uh, a really cool like, experience. Yeah, yeah, and uh, we ended up staying up till like four in the morning. Um, we drank like a whole bottle of Jack. We just like <laughs> totally just we're just talking about everything. And and I just told her I was like, hey, serious question. I want to be where you are. I want to do what you do. You know, what do I need to do to get where you are? And you know, it, we had already like bonded enough for like four hours that she was just straight up with me. She's like, you can't do it in Oregon. You got to move to Nashville. You can't. There's a ceiling here. You're not gonna be a superstar in Oregon, you know, you got to move. Right. So not even like, she gave me like her email and some number texted me. And so I was like, I think that's her number, but I don't know. So I messaged her like a few times, sent her some emails. I was persistent, but not annoying. And uh, I just, uh, <laughs> one day was like, hey, I'm flying out there and I'm going to move out there. So can we meet up? And she didn't even respond to me for like five emails. And oh, then, wow respond yeah I was like right. oh is this even gonna work is she even gonna ever respond to me I don't know um but it worked out like she emailed me back on the fifth email and she was like hey yeah here's my address come over and let's chat and I was like oh wow this is happening oh geez so I went over to her house and showed her some music I've been working on to kind of get that opportunity to show her that I was serious and uh, she loved it so much. She's like, all right, well, when are you moving here? And not even two months later, I sold a bunch of crab, salmon, and tuna, saved up my money, and I moved out to Nashville. Well, that is phenomenal. You know, you made, you made your dreams happen, and you met some really cool people along the way who, who wanted to help totally. you nurture that. I love that story because this is exactly what Core Women is all about. It's about lifting other women up. And really being oh, yeah. a part of their journey and helping them along, you know, if we can. So, yeah, I absolutely love that story. I love your strategy. I love that you worked, <laughs> you know, you've worked really hard to get where you're at. And it does. It takes a plan a lot of times. And then it takes a little yeah. And then it takes a little bit of a dash of whatever, you know, to really yeah, just to, say, hey, this is fearless. Right. Yeah, exactly. Like when... When you're fearless and you just say, hey, like, this is what I'm going to do and no one's stopping me, most times it works out, but we're just too scared to do it. And, you know, for all my other women out there listening, like, you just got to find what you love, be fearless, and pursue that dream because life's so short, you know, why not? Like, just go for it. You know what? You're absolutely right, Jesse. Um, you know, it's it's funny that you say that because I'm going to be, you know, putting out a video here pretty soon. I do these strategic learning videos. And one of the things I talk about and the, the you know, the title of that video is going to be why wait? You know, why wait? Well, you know, are you waiting because, right, are you waiting because you're, you're fearful? Are you waiting because mm-hmm. it's just not the right time? And really, what does that mean? It, there's always a right time, time, you know? Right. <laughs> and, and, and let's make it the right time, right? And then the other yep. thing is, are we putting other people before ourselves? And I'm not saying that, you know, you can't go out and help other people because we absolutely want to help and lift up other people. But you know what? Definitely. To be, like you said, like Gretchen, one of those badass women, you're going to go out and you're going to put yourself first and you're going to create your dream. You're not just going to keep oh, dreaming. Yeah. You're actually going to create that dream and put action behind it, right? So it comes to fruition. Exactly. So. Exactly. Anyway, so I love your story. Now, tell us a little bit about, because I have to touch on this, being a military spouse myself, tell me about Army Ranger and the inspiration for that new song. Yeah, well, first off, thank you and your husband for your service. We, you know, we have the same kind of heart, so um, (laughs) it takes a lot to be, it takes a lot for them to do what they do, obviously, that highlights in the song. But also it takes a lot to be the person behind them, and they, and they also need that person behind them. So thank you. Oh, <laughs> um, yes, this, thank you so much for, for saying that because the song really, it really resonated with me, and I think it's going to um, resonate with so many people for various reasons. So tell me a little bit more about the song and the inspiration for that. Definitely. So, um, yeah, I, I have been with a man in the military for uh, two and a half years, and 
we, um, you know, we've been through deployment and a lot of hard field missions and training and some moving and we've been through a little bit of everything. And, uh, one day he had been gone for about a month and I hadn't heard from him. And I was in one of those moods where I was just not, I, I just wasn't okay. I was just sad and I missed him. And, and it was just, it, you know, it wasn't anything that I wasn't going to make it through or, you know, that we weren't going to make it through. But it was just one of those days where that was just the only thing on my mind was just how much I missed him. And I had a writing session book that day with uh, two great co-writers uh, that I love to write with, uh, Melanie Marini and Michael August. And I went into um, the writing room and I just told them, I was like, hey, guys, you know, I'm not going to lie and be fake and write some kind of fun, upbeat party song like this is what's on my mind and you can either go with me on it or we can fake through a different idea but I've uh, been sitting on this lyric for a while and I think it's a super romantic um, tagline and it's called I fell in love with an army ranger and they Mm -hmm. both have a lot of military in their family and they both you know it hit home for them too and they looked at me and they were like that's amazing let's write it and uh, it was about an hour and a half of a lot of crying and goosebumps and me just, you know, telling them uh, different scenarios of how I feel and what I go through and, and us throwing out lines here and there. And the song really unfolded in about an hour, an hour and a half. Um, wow. Which is, yeah, That's which quick. is amazing. Like, yes. Yeah. And the best ones happen that quick. You know, the best ones right. are written on pizza boxes and they just, their time to be written at that time and that was that was what happened and that song was meant to be written there and then and um you know it's it's such a great song because it's not only recognizing the families and the spouses and you know everybody who loves someone in the military but it also recognizes the sacrifice that they go through and how selfless they are and how you know we I think forget sometimes that service members give up everything they give up going to their siblings weddings they give up going home for holidays they give up so much and that takes such a hard toll and we don't experience that as just normal civilians um because we have a choice you know and they don't and it's one of those things where like i appreciate and love our military so much and um it's the proudest i've ever been of of my music that's for sure (laughs) Well, thank you so much for making that song because, like I said, it's going to resonate with a lot of people, and it certainly did with me. Um, you know, being a military spouse and, you know, being overseas while my husband was at war, that was a, that was a tough time. But as, yes. as females, we, we, we did band together and we created a community. I, I remember a situation where there were about 13 of us sitting around a table and we were all stationed in Okinawa with our spouses, but there were about eight of us who whose spouses were away at war at the time out of the 13. Wow. And so, you know, that meant that we had to, you know, pitch in and do what we could. So yeah. I, didn't, I didn't even have kids, but I, you know, I ran a, a Girl Scouts troop. I participated Aww. in PTO. I, you know, you, you, you pitched in where you could because when you're on a small yeah. island or even if you're in the States and you don't have your spouse, you know, your, your, your peers, are the ones that are really going to, you know, understand what you're going through. And I think that, oh, too, yeah. you know, you being a, a, a girlfriend of somebody who's in the military, a lot of times that's difficult because, you know, as spouses, we have a peer group. <laughs> and as, girlfriend, as a girlfriend, sometimes, you know, it's kind of like you're out there yeah. and you're on your own, you know? Totally. You, you know, you know it's that. funny, though, there's actually – I'm I'm very grateful because he went to West Point, so we have a very, like – we have they're they're kind of clicky. They uh, yes. have their yes. friend groups that also went there. So I know right. so many girlfriends that oh, have been, awesome. you know, they're they're like us and they're committed. Like they've been together for a long time. So that's nice. But then on top of it, I have been so fortunate, and I don't know if it's because I'm an entertainer and and a lot of the times I do sing for the FRG or some of the other um, military uh, functions. But right. uh, the wives are great to me. Like I, I am like, so glad. Yeah, like, I mean, I, I know so that there's here. some of my girlfriends that don't have the same experience, which I feel bad for them, but, dude, we, like, first day we moved in here um, down by Fort Bragg, like, uh, one of the neighbors came up, and she's um, retired Air Force, and her husband is 
an army ranger, and she came up and she, you know, greeted us with wine. She has no idea who I am or anything, um, except for I'm sure after she met me, she Googled me and all that stuff. But um, she uh, was so welcoming, and now we hang out all the time, and it's just great because the wives have treated me with open arms, and I have not had one single bad experience um, with just needing a community. Um, I feel very lifted up and supported, which has been great. That is awesome, and and I'm happy to hear that. If you were to leave our listeners with some words of wisdom, what would be that? What would be those words? Um, words of wisdom. Uh, that's mm-hmm. so hard because I feel like <laughs> I feel like I'm still learning so much and just being a sponge. But I mean, I guess that's some wisdom is never stop learning, never stop being a sponge. Um, right. Once you think that you know it all is kind of when you stop knowing it all. Uh, and you know, the, like I said earlier, being fearless. If that's the one thing that I've learned from Gretchen, you know, and she's such a great mentor, and I'm so lucky to have such a great mentor. Because everyone needs a great mentor. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. But the one Absolutely. thing I've learned is, like, being fearless and, you know, never having a limit to yourself in any way. Like, don't ha- don't think that you can't do something, you know, and you can't push yourself to the next level because you always can. Like, you'd be surprised how much power your mind has, how much power your body has, how much power just you have in general. And you know, being a woman, like, we underestimate ourselves sometimes, and you can't. Like, you just got to be fearless. Go after what you love, whether that be a relationship or a job or having kids or, you know, just just, uh, do it. If you want it, if you dream it, you can do it. That is awesome. And thank you so much for, thank you so much for those words of wisdom and for taking the time today to be on the Core Women podcast. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Summer. This was great. Absolutely. So if you need a strategic empowerment coach, contact me. If you want to tell your story of empowerment or how you have reconstructed your life to drive change, send me a video or an email of your story providing permission to use it on my social media platforms. If you want to be featured on my podcast, reach out to me at info at corewomen.com. I want to hear from you and to get to know you. You are now part of the Core Women Home. Let's get to know each other. Let's learn from one another. Please follow Core Women on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And please let your women friends know about this podcast. If you write about core women in your social media posts, please hashtag core women. This is all about women. If you would like to know more about Jessie G, please go to her website at jessiegmusic.com, her Facebook page, and IG page. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about core women, and please stay tuned for continued growth of the core women movement. Let's grow and drive change together.